Good morning from New York City. A little bit rainy today. What are the laws of nature? Well, there are many. For the past year or so, as I've been giving these talks, uh, about 110 now, mostly I've been talking about the laws of nature. Sometimes I did a little bit of mathematics, um, sometimes a little bit of geometry, what not, probability. Well, that's a law, there's a law of nature in there. If there was to be only one law of nature, suppose there is only one law of nature, there could be, then everybody knows what it is. You can put your finger on it straight away. And here it is, if there is only one law of nature, suppose you're given an unbiased coin with two sides, two right there, your binary, and uh, you toss this coin, let's say a thousand times, yeah? It will not come up a hundred times heads and nine hundred times tails. That's not going to happen. You can predict pretty closely the number of heads you will find versus the number of tails you will find visible when you toss the coin. Okay? Approximately half, right? Five hundred times. Give or take whatever experimental error is in there. Some number. One time you might get 499 heads and 501 tails next time, but it'll be closely around <clears throat> close around that number half that could be the only law of nature and this could be the only manipulation of it that's you know there's a thing called shannon's entropy that looks like this i've i've been playing around with that for quite a long time one way or another the laws of nature are what we have been discussing and studying and you guys have been learning now, the laws of nature almost always can be written in terms of mathematics, but not always. Here is one law of nature that we have not written in terms of mathematics, but that's only because we don't know how, right? It was one of the very first laws of nature that was formulated when the study of physics, as what we call physics, really is natural philosophy, began. And that was Galileo's law of inertia. When things keep going, they keep going in a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force, a push or a pull. A force is a push or a pull which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body. That means if you want to constrain it to move in a circle, you need to pull it. Um, if you want to make it move off its straight line course, you have to push it or pull it. If you want to stop it, you have to pull it or push it. If you want to get it going or increase its speed, same thing, you need a force. Newton's second law, define force. Now, let's look at that actually, just since we're at it. Oh, I'll come back to that later. There's the idea that the force and the straight line and Newton's law is very interestingly connected. You saw Newton's law in the ab absence force equals mass times acceleration. You integrate once, right? And then you integrate twice, you get the equation of a straight line, right? So, what laws of force? There's a list of them here, I'll go over them in a minute. Anyway, this law, this little talk is to do with breaking those laws, right? If there is a God, <clears throat> I don't know if there is or not, I don't know. People with faith feel that there is, that's fine, but I don't know. So, if there is a God, he was the person who invented those laws, or she, or it, or whatever, invented those laws, of nature and they are not to be broken right they are written in stone right so let's look at some of the laws we're familiar with that we talked about the geometry of space what do I mean by that that there are three dimensions up down and across there could be two flatland the famous little book it's a world with two dimensions about 1880 I forget who wrote it but it's quite interesting you should get your hands on it it's thin and not expensive or four dimensions, or five dimensions. It's, these things are all possible. Pythagoras' theorem is equally valid in four, dimen in four dimensions as it is in two or three. <clears throat> and time. That time moves ahead and doesn't move backwards or sideways for us is a law of nature. Space and time. Gravitation. The thing that keeps the solar system in its clockwork motion and the galaxy and the universe all in there together. That we stand on the earth and don't go floating off into space. The law of gravitation, written down of course by Isaac Newton. A law. It is a law. The law of gravitation. And is it true? People say, well, it's only a theory. But it's a theory that we know to be true. 
People who don't believe in the laws of nature play around with that word a lot. Oh, that's only a theory. The theory of evolution. It's only a theory, but something we know to be true. We know it to be true because of the overwhelming evidence in its favour. That's the law of gravitation, the law of evolution, and uh, so on and so forth. QED and QCD, quantum electrodynamics and quantum chromodynamics. Quantum chromodynamics is a little bit dubious at the moment. We don't know it for sure, but it's a candidate for strong interactions. QED has been proven to be true to within the width of a hair as compared to the distance from New York to Los Angeles. Right? That's in Feynman's little book. Quantum electrodynamics, the theory about the interaction between matter and light. I will, I've done a little bit of it for you guys. Okay, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That means if you know the position, you can't fully, if you know the position completely, you cannot fully determine the momentum and vice versa. All right? Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, a result from quantum mechanics, is a law of nature that so far we have not been able to get around. I brought my coffee here. There are many laws of thermodynamics, but let's go through these. De Broglie's little relationship that links the momentum and the wavelength of a particle. Einstein's, sorry, Planck's and Einstein's little equation, E equals H times the frequency, the photon energy. These are things that you don't really describe as laws of nature, but they're part of this constructs that we call quantum mechanics, which embodies a lot of the laws of nature. Maxwell's equations, wow. They predict the speed of light, and they explain how light works, and they are, from about 1860, some of the most amazingly mathematically formulated laws of physics. Four equations. Boltzmann's Definition of entropy, most amazing little result by Ludwig Boltzmann, I don't know, about 1870. The definition of entropy itself, that we know that entropy goes up and it doesn't go down. The conservation of energy. <clears throat> energy within a system is conserved. It doesn't get created or destroyed, but it might get converted into mass, or vice versa, mass might get converted into energy. Conserving energy in a thermodynamic system, right? The first law of thermodynamics, which we've gone over. And all those other laws of nature are immutable. They are not to be uh, compromised, broken. I had a better word and I can't think about it a minute ago. One way or another, you can't break these laws. We have, we have to adhere to them. And if there is a supreme being, he's not going to break them either, right? Nor does he want anybody else to do it. He does not want... Psychics, fortune tellers, astrologists, faith healers, mystics. These, don't, these guys don't exist. Vampires. Vampires in the film sense. There might be people around there that have an illness that make people suck people's blood. That doesn't make them a vampire. Vampires that die and come back to life and things like that is what I mean. Heaven, hell, purgatory. I know some people believe in those. I'll, I'll, I'll skip those. Homeopathy. Quacks. Some, fake, some notorious quack was a fellow called Popoff. James Randi showed him up. James Randi also showed up Yuri Geller, a famous fake, right? He used to pretend to bend spoons psychically. And of course, it was only a magic act. He had them bent before. He had them all weakened up before. And nobody ever thought to bring in their own spoon. I'll skip these two. You can put those in later yourselves. Ghosts, goblins, fairies, you name it. <coughs> Strange gods like Thor, Zeus, and any other you can think of. Thousands all around the world, different gods. These are things that subvert the laws of nature, and the laws of nature, as we know, are to be respected. Who wants to subvert them? I think it would be amazing if it did happen. It's not going to happen. It's even more beautiful that they are never subverted. It's more beautiful in the world that we live in that we have some comprehension of them. We haven't got them all figured out, but we've got quite a lot. We've got a lot figured out, at least within the human experience, okay? These are the law of nature, laws of nature that we're working on, and as time goes on, we get better at understanding them. At the moment, we're limited through our experimental evidence and our mathematics. Maybe we're never going to be able to figure out all the laws of nature. Maybe humans are not smart enough to do that, but so far so good, right? 
It's a challenge. The message. We neither break nor suspend the laws of nature. They are there, firm in stone. If they were ever suspended, the world that we live in would be a very peculiar place and a very dangerous place, perhaps. The laws of nature, that, the way, that they work that way, is good for us. It's good that we understand some of the things about them. And we are living now in the age of reason. We're not in the age of faith, we're in the age of reason. And for years, humans remained backwards. Backward because they did not, they made up stories about why things worked. They didn't reason things out, check things by experiment, develop theories mathematically that fitted with observation and experiment. This is the age of reason. So there is no suspension of these laws. And I already said, if there is only one law of nature, it's the one that says that if you toss a coin a thousand times, chances are it's going to be 500 times heads, close to 500 times tails. That's a powerful law of nature. That may be related to gravity and everything else, but nobody knows. So this is my message for you today. Forget the goblins, forget the fairies, forget the quacks, forget the homeopathy. Homeopathy is not a reasonable science. It's a shame that uh, people are trying to put it on equal footing with modern, modern medicine. And what else? Oh yeah, the number of quacks and magicians. A magician is all right. That say, a magician that admits he's doing things by trickery is fine. An illusionist, somebody like Houdini, they uh, created an illusion of something happening that suspended the law of, na a law of nature. But those guys are okay because they're doing it for entertainment and they say up front that it's a trick. It's the ones who pretend that there is some, something supernatural involved, some psychic energy, who knows what, involved. They're the ones to worry about. This guy was notorious. I don't know how he got away with it. And they run away with bags full of money afterwards. Ghosts and goblins and fairies and Zeus and everybody else who can suspend the laws of nature, forget it. Right? What's, what, what are current ones? We know that they're not true. Like Batman and, and Spider-Man and all those that show up in comics. Yeah, they're, that, that's kind of harmless. Uh, it's known that these guys don't really exist. That's a fiction. Fiction is fine. Anyway, you get the message. Stick with the laws of nature. That's the way we like to live. The world we live in is governed by them. End of story for today. My next talk is going to be on Looking at Lagrange's equations with friction.